Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. This is a Keep Hammering Collective, episode 12,006. I think we're at, or what are we at? I think 12,007 here. <laughs> <one off. laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's in 12,000 of those are with Gideon. <laughs> so yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is what the public demands. I mean, uh, I didn't want to say it. You know, all I'll Gideon, let you say it all the time. Only Gideon. Yeah. We're doing a spinoff Gideon show. <laughs> <laughs> Gideon at night. Yeah. And after dark until when Connor gets here, then yeah. it'll be, it'll be back. Yeah, exactly. The Connor and Gideon show. Yeah, it's Gideon Larry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what's, uh, God, it's been a while. Yeah. We haven't been up to much. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I'm just now basically feeling about back to 10%. <laughs> I was at zero. Negative percent. I, yeah. It was, uh. We had, yeah, the month in the mountains. What did you think of it? Your, that was your first month in the mountains. My first and last. <laughs> uh, <laughs> must be nice. Yeah. I told you that uh, I have a bone to pick <laughs> with all the haters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to start off with that, in a way, it was probably one of the hardest months of my life. Stress wise, mm -hmm. mentally wise. Uh, and I told you also, is like after filming at all these amazing elk, you know, places that people would give a leg for, uh, I still think I would take my Montana public. <laughs> yeah. Getting my dick pushed in to hunt. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, you know, those are hard because I used to hunt by myself a lot. And it was like, it was just different. It felt, it felt like you would you would hear about places like where, where I hunted and where yeah. you filmed me and you just think it, Oh my God, that would be a dream come true. Um, but there, there's something about being on your own in public land. There's, you know, I mean, if you screw up, it's, you just screw up. Everybody's bow hunters out there screw up all the time. Yeah. If you nick a bull, you know, hit a, screw up hit a limb and the arrow hits the the like the shin bone of, a, of an elk or the lower leg of an elk on one of these hunts that we're talking about if a a drop of blood hits the ground you're done that's your elk on public land by yourself oh you know oh there's blood on one fletch yeah whatever bull's gonna be fine let's keep hunting it's <laughs> i don't know i it's i don't know Public land hunting is very, very hard. You know, I mean, uh, I killed a bull every year doing it, but I had to earn it. Um, this is just hard in a different way. Exactly. And, and I don't know yeah. if, if you have a way to put it into words. I, for me, it's like, it kind of like you said, it doesn't matter on, you know, it's like public land, there's almost a, an expectation that it's going to be hard and that there's a really good chance you'll fail. Mm -hmm. With these hunts, it's like, it's not just good enough to get a bull. Mm -hmm. It's it's not, you know, it's got to be, you know, a certain age and it has to be a certain size or, um, you know, you're expected to perform. And I think especially in the conditions you're under, for me, it was just like, this is a, it's just a whole lot of pressure, you know? So you're operating for a month straight at such high levels and that just becomes mentally taxing. Yeah. You know? Um, and people listening to this will be, I, I, I don't know, I probably would be the same if I hadn't, if I didn't know what it felt like. Yeah. But uh, I saw somebody made a comment on the, on my page, which, man, you can't, you can't put too much into the comments, but said something like, if I had a hundred grand to spend on an elk hunt, I, I guarantee they, they guaranteed they'd kill a world record. <laughs> and I want to, I wanted to say, do you know how fucking dumb you sound? I mean, I, what are you talking about? You think that's all it takes is you got money and you're going to kill a world record. 
that's what I don't I, I don't know if it just like goes over people's heads, but you could pay a million dollars. The elk doesn't give a fuck. No, I mean, and, and you know, we had there was a seven by seven bull, a big one on San Carlos, and we talked about that with with Mark, and uh, you know, he had this hunter coming in, Kevin, who's you know been great there. He's been there for years, and that was the bull they you know kind of were targeted, and it was I think like a four twenty, just a big heavy yeah. seven by seven. Anyway, never found it, and he killed another you know another bull over four hundred rifle hunt, but. Uh, there's no guarantees. No, this this is wild elk. I mean, so that that bull was hitting water, and you're on the you know the best place in the on the planet for big bulls. But so what? So it had been hitting water, doesn't mean anything. No. It's they had it's gone. Yeah, exactly. And I I don't know. I guess people just don't get that. But I just wanted to say that before, you know, people get their sweaty, twitchy little fingers <laughs> on the keyboards. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's definitely different. Yeah, I mean, stop I, eating sunscreen in your mom's house and go stare at the sun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I I don't even I don't even know how to explain it, but I do know that you know um, a lot of people on all the hunts that I've done this season, a lot of good hunters did not kill. Yeah, just not guaranteed. No, no. matter how much money you pay. So. Yeah. Well, I guess we could run through a little bit of an overview of each hunt. Yeah. Um, so let's good. start with San Carlos. That was where we went first. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the first kill. No. But it's the place we went first. Yeah. it's uh, That one, I was a day late uh, season, I think, started on the second. And I had that appearance with Jelly Roll. We were, he was playing a show here in Portland. And then we went to the prison. And I, I felt like if I was going to give up a day for something, that was a just cause. Mm -hmm. Um, of course there was some drama involved with that decision too. Uh, you know, I mean, you don't know what those inmates had, have, have done to get there. Obviously they've, they've screwed up, but, uh, there's different levels of screwing up too. So, um, there's some criticism with kind of going and doing that, but you're going to be criticized for whatever. Anyway, it gave up. Uh, a day of hunting for that. So we showed up to San Carlos on the third and, uh, pretty hot, uh, pretty early in the rut. Um, and, uh, yeah, we we're there with big Joe covering miles, mm -hmm. big, sexy, <laughs> big, sexy covering miles. Great guy. Love man. Love big Joe. He's such a good guy. But I mean that whole camp really all the way, you know, Brenda, the cook, Chris, the cook, um, Homer, Mark, Tim Stevens, all those guys, you know, they know big bulls. You know, we, we did that, that, uh, podcast with them there from the elk camp, from the road and, uh, yeah, just an amazing hunt, but it was, we're putting in some miles and passing on bulls. I would, yeah. I normally never would have. Yeah. what do you think of that? Uh, I mean, that was wild for me because <clears throat> prior to that, you know, the biggest bull I had ever put my hands on was a deadhead that was 383. So, I mean, hunting, I don't think I had ever seen anything probably bigger than 350. And that's, that's a big a, bull. And that's miles off. That's a know? giant bull. That's bowl. not close. Right. So, you know, watching you pass up these bulls, and kind of to readjust my brain, I was like, I mean, these are like shit your pants big. You yeah. Know? Uh, so that was wild for me. That was, it was super cool, but it was also at the same time like, holy shit. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it's, you know, you get used to, you start off with these different expectations. So, you know, when I first started bow hunting any bull, right. And then it was like, man, if you could get a branch antler bull, that's a trophy. Well, first it was like any bulls, a trophy, I, yeah, you know, right. a spike, you know, I don't know where my, my, my first spike is somewhere around here, but I still have it. So any bull is a trophy. Um, then you go to branch antler. Then it was like, I had this, this goal, it's got to be a five point or better. Right. Mm. And a five point is a good bull. Yeah. Okay. Now we're talking a few years old. Yeah. The bull's been around a little bit and that was hard with the bow. So you, you get these different levels, but you're never going to pass up a seven by eight, <laughs> a three seventy seven by eight. And I had that one come in to the water and I'm just like, there's a clip that I did. I put up on my phone just the other day again, but 
I remember I feel myself going, I hate this place because <laughs> it, it's incredible. But just knowing that that's a bull of a lifetime. And if you're going to, you know, I don't know, for there, that would be like, that's on the bottom end of yeah. what they want to kill. Right. That's on the, like past the top end of what I'm happy <laughs> yeah. with. So that is just a different mindset. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. But then we, we, so we spent the first three days there and then you had a, a deer tag in Colorado. So we, you know, wanted to get up there to make sure we still had deer in velvet. Yeah. I mean, once those deer come out of velvet, it gets, it changes, they get in the brush then. And so I'm like, well, it's pretty hot here. The it's early for the rut. And, uh, I thought if I want to take advantage of that, I had an elk tag and a deer tag. And if I want to make sure the deer are in velvet, um, I don't know how long this Arizona one's going to take. The season went all the way to the 18th, I think. Yep. And uh, <laughs> we're at the third. I had to, I'm supposedly supposed to be in Utah on the 16th and still had to get Colorado in there. So I'm like, I didn't know how this math was going to work. I never really think my season through too, too well. I'm like, I'm like, I just, I'll figure it out on the fly. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to, let me run up to Colorado. You know, a 10 hour nonstop drive is not exactly running up there real quick. Through the night. Through the night, no <laughs> sleep. Um, so yeah, let me run up to Colorado and see if we can find a buck. There's this old buck, a white face buck that we figured was eight or nine years old. And, uh, I'd seen him for a couple of years and, you know, uh, talking with Johnny Hamilton there who he, he sprays, uh, that ranch, uh, that it's a bit huge property, but he sprays like, um, yeah, I mean, all those giant ranches down in Southern Colorado, he's, he sprays mm. the roads. And, uh, so anyway, he, he keeps track of the stuff. Plus he, he guides there. And, uh, so knew this buck had been seen, I think a few days earlier, him and Robbie had seen it and taken some pictures. So I'm like, well, let me go see if we can track that, that thing down. So here we drove through the night, showed up there right at first light. And, uh, yeah, that was a long first day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a long first day, but got it done. Yeah. That, uh, Brian Stevens, my buddy, he, uh, got him a tag there this year. Great guy. Uh, he's got a book coming out. He's just like, loves to talk bow hunting. He will like, you know, I drove all through the night or we drove. I mean, I didn't sleep at all. Yeah. You slept maybe a couple minutes. Yeah. I don't even know, yeah. but, uh, I was ready for, so did the morning hunt. didn't really come up with anything. Didn't, couldn't find that buck. So I'm like, I need to take a nap <laughs> and got back, started talking to Brian about bow hunting. No nap. <laughs> So there's no doubt before I knew it, it's like, I got to go shoot my bow. Um, because when I got there that morning, I was so shaky from five hour energies. I could bear the, I put the target up at like 22 yards. I was, my arrows were catch, catching the edge. I'm like, I need some food or something. So, uh, yeah, I shot my bow shot good that afternoon and headed out for the evening hunt. And, uh, yeah, it started off pretty slow. I mean, what did we start off doing? I mean, the evening hunt, I think we were pretty, pretty set on just getting up there, seeing if we heard anything. And then we had, you decided eventually just to, to go on that walk. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we went to the corner. It's the corner where I, where we glassed this bull from last year. And this is, this was a giant bull. This is my biggest last year. This is a 379 bull. And uh, Tanner was filming that one. And we saw it from this corner high above this giant meadow. And the bulls come out of the timber on the other side. And he had a herd down there and I went, snuck down there and got him killed first day last year. And, uh, so we went there to that corner, uh, heard some bulls, but it was still kind of early. So I think I looked at, I looked at the time and I'm like, I was like four something. And, uh, I think it was getting dark around seven forty-five. So I'm like, asked Johnny, I said, Hey, could you just take, run me up to the top of this drainage we call little Martinez. I said, could you drop me off at the top of that? And I'll just walk down. I'll take James with me. You could film and, uh, pick me up at the bottom, which is about a, it's a few miles and pick me up at the bottom at six and then we'll have the evening hunt. So, but let me work this, this Canyon. 
and do some cow calling along the way. Just kind of, I I just like walking, getting the wind in my face and just kind of working, you know, you you bugle from like the, there's some points you can bugle into these giant canyons, but the bulls don't always answer, you know, until you get on top of them. But we dropped off in there, spooked a couple bucks right off the bat. was wondering if that was my target buck was in there because we still hadn't seen him, but in the oak brush, um, I started working down through and, you know, pretty quiet. Um, we had some clouds coming over some, it's like kind of weird, just a little weather systems coming over, just like kind of single thunder cloud sort of. And I think there was some thunder going on. There I was. Remember, yeah. yeah. And so when that, when those clouds would come over, the wind would get unsettled. Um, yeah you know, those, that, and that happens. Um, so when that, would, when the wind would kind of shift, I would just kind of wait and just let it pass and then continue on working down with the wind in our face. Um, got down, heard pretty good bugle. It sounded like not too far away, 400 yards maybe. And then another bugle, like a little bit, uh, to the left of it. If you're looking down the, down the draw and, um, uh, thought, okay, we got, you know, I had to, jump back and forth across the creek a little bit to figure out which way I wanted the wind uh, or to, to play into the wind. I ended up going up through the timber. I thought the dark timber would be better for sneaking in because the bottom was kind of open meadow. But up in the dark timber, there was a bunch of like limbs and little branches on the ground, which two people on a quiet evening was fucking noisy. Yeah. And so I'm like, God dang it, I gotta get out, out of this dark timber. And I could kind of see through the trees. I could see a bull and I'm like, looked and I'm like, he's about a hundred yards away at this time. And I'm like, okay, that's a pretty good bull. Should try to kill him. And, uh, he went into this wallow. And the thing about this country is that there's a lot of gas wells around it. And so for a gas, natural gas well, they got to have water. So there's water in, at these places. And he had made a little wallow in the bottom of this. I think it was an old windmill or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but anyway, there was some water and he had dug out a wallow there. So we got out of the timber and then there was, uh, it's kind of like a cedar tree, basically kind of thick brush. And I'm like, man, if I could just sneak up, use that as a shield, I could just sneak up to 20 yards and you were behind me filming. And then I could pop around, come to full drop, pop around and just smoke them in the, in the wallow. Sounds good. Right. Um, but as I said, it was a quiet evening and I started to go using that, that brush as shield. And then I was like looking and I'm like, well, there's gaps in this thing and I can see him through there. And you know how it is when you're a long way back, it looks like the brush is solid, yeah. but if you're right up close to it, those gaps look big and you can see really well. Yeah. And he was closer to the brush than I was. So I'm like, oh shit, he could probably see me. So I kind of really slowed down and my feet are still making noise in this dry grass. Well, he's laying in the wall and not bugling, not doing anything. And he's just kind of listening like they do. Cause they'll bugle sometimes and they'll listen to see if a if bull's going to answer. Right. And so he was just kind of laying there. I think he had bugled and just laying there and listening. And I, I think he heard me in the grass. So mm-hmm. he gets up and he walks around that, that brush to me. And then I'm busted right there in the middle. And, uh, I'd like down on my knees, pretty much blaming you for some, somehow. I don't know why, but thought, Oh, he's looking at James, even though I'm in the wide open. <laughs> oh, I was too. I mean, but I was, I, I was behind you yeah. like directly in line, but I, I was thinking, fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it was. And I still never even really looked at his antlers. I just knew that good bull, uh, definitely a shooter. Yeah. Anyway, blew up. I was throwing this little fit down in the meadow. He runs up. The herd kind of goes the opposite side of the drainage. He went to his own side. And so he split up from the cows. Well, he didn't really re- want to leave those cows because that, or leave the cows because that other bull had been bugling. Yeah. So he knew there's a bull there. Anyway, so it kind of paralleled. And then I look up and I'm like, oh God, he's still right up there. And he kind of works. And I, I work my way a little down and uh, the timber kind of opens up and he comes into this little opening and I have this tunnel through the trees. And I'm like, holy shit, I could get an arrow in, into this bull. And his shoulder was covered up by a tree, but I ranged it. It was within my effective range. Um, and dog my side in, hustling because, you know, I'd already spooked him. So it's yeah, not like right. he's going to stand there forever. And I just pulled back, felt pretty good. That was, you feel me shoot. I put that up. Yeah. Kind of a, you know, 
it'd be cool to have that and the shot over yeah. my shoulder, but we didn't have two guys. Um, so that shot and what I'd really focus on when I'm shooting at a bull is to keep my pin there. I notice when I, when I make a bad shot or screw up, it's cause I dropped my bow arm mm -hmm. on the shot. So if I consciously think, keep my pin there, you know, which means keep my pin on them. You pick a spot, you put your pin right there, then you squeeze and you, you want that pin to stay there. So on that, what you filmed, it was like almost exaggerated how long I held that bow up. But because of that, I got a good arrow in them and yep. I didn't, I couldn't really tell. It seemed like it took a long time to get there. And I'm like, God, did that go over them? But it sounded, I heard something. Yeah. So I, you know, still high emotion. I'm like, stand right here. You stand right here. <laughs> I'm like, stay right there. You, well, I'm going to get up there. I'm, you stay right where I shot. So it's like, whatever. This sounds like I, some insane, like retelling it. But in the moment, I am insane. So you stood there. I go up the hill and I'm like up to where I thought he was. And I'm looking down. I'm like, God, dang, that's a long, you were a long way. You look <laughs> small down there. But I'm like, it looked like this arrow could make it through here good if I made a good shot. And so I slowly like knocked an arrow and um, we just wanted to see what type of blood we're dealing with. So I eased down. I got down to this little skid road and it looked like liver blood to me. It looked dark. So I'm like, you know, he's digging in. I go, okay, well, I need to give him a little time because I am i didn't see the arrow hit, but this blood is looking like liver to me. And, uh, you know, he was quartering slightly. So I'm thinking... If I got liver, that should have got a lung on the other side, but you never know. You never, you know, again, I didn't see a hit. So I went down to you, told you, I said, I think I got liver. We need to back out of here super quiet. So we worked up that road, glassing yeah. down just to make sure I, he wasn't bedded down right there, but I didn't want to spook him at all. And we got out of there. So by this time it was about six and I'm like, I told Johnny, I said, um, I need to give him a little time. So maybe we should go look for that buck. Went up, looked for that buck, found the buck, got him killed, yeah. did a great job on the, on the film on that. Yeah. And uh, I think he was, that was 60, was it seven or four? Yeah, 60, I think seven. Seven? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, got him killed, great buck, uh, white face, old buck, eight or nine is, is what we're figuring. And uh, yeah, just... Yeah. So that was amazing. Yeah. What, what do you remember from that? Uh, I mean, I just remember like anytime, I mean, this goes for all of them, but anytime like we kind of get busted or whatever, it, it makes me feel like, uh, like when you have something really embarrassing happen when you're a kid, yeah. <laughs> you wish you could just disappear. Oh yeah. Yeah. <sighs> like, it's, shit. it's a lot of pressure out there. I mean, yeah. I know you're feeling pressure. Um, to not screw up basically, and also to get it on film. Yeah. So that's a delicate balance right there because yeah. you don't want to push it too far. Yeah, right. To, you don't want to sacrifice the hunt saying, well, I was trying to get it on film, but you don't want to look back afterwards. And I want to say, okay, let's look at the footage. Like, don't, <laughs> don't have it. So and we had a fair amount. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, I mean, it is freaking tough. It is. <laughs> Uh, let's just say we're both surprised I'm still sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's ups and downs with the month in the mountains for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you were down more than you were up. <laughs> but I, if, if I'm basing it on the last one, the last one was we're, pretty damn good. We're improving. <laughs> well, no, the first, because it started with the grizzly hunt. Yeah. And that was actually somehow pretty good. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Have we looked? I mean, we, we looked at the footage. Yeah. I've seen camp. worse. Yeah. No, it's, that's actually good. And then the last bowl was good. Yeah. So. So we can forget about everything in between. So <laughs> if you're grading it on a curve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's just kind of how it goes. It was, uh, there was some. A lot of learning moments and uh, kind of surprised I didn't have a heart attack at 26 years old. <laughs> yeah, I was, man, I've had some tough seasons. And again, people will listen to this and be like, oh, I fucking, 
I walked 40 miles with 200 pounds on my back <laughs> and didn't see an elk. And I'm like, okay, you had it harder. But besides <laughs> you, whoever that is that I guarantee is listening, it was a tough, it was stressful, yeah. very stressful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, to, to wrap up the bull part, um, that luck, I did give it some time and that worked out good. Uh, went back in there with Wes, uh, Wes, uh, what's his last Yoder. name? Yoder. Yoder. Yeah. God, I loved, I love, I, I always somehow forget his last name, but great bow hunter, great guy. And, uh, Johnny, so we, we blood trailed that bull. He went about 200 yards and was dead. So, uh, that worked out perfect. Meat, yeah. of course, meat was all good. Everything great. Um, and, uh, he was a freaking giant. Super cool bull. I mean, freaking giant. Yeah. I, this, this bull had been the biggest I killed. Now that bull is, and, yeah. uh, yeah, those extra thirds are insane. Wild. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. So that was really cool to see. Yeah. So I think he ended up being like an eight by seven. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause he's, yeah. Cause he's seven by seven. Perfect. But he's got that little kicker on the fifth or fourth or fifth. Pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, uh, and what he, he was, what's this bull? Three, 379. So 10 points bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Giant. Yeah. Giant Colorado bull. Yeah. That and, was awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty eventful evening yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that was insane and uh, then uh i'll never top an evening evening uh, hunt like that uh, yeah yeah what did your deer score 185 185 that's right yeah and people always ask about the meat so i'll just uh you know i can address the meat on these things uh for that meat um there's uh, a guy mitch who's always in camp great guy he's a he hunts there. He was bear hunting and, uh, man, I just, I just love him. And he's, he asked if I would donate the, the deer to, he's got a church group that has a, a big, big, big game banquet, wild game banquet. And, uh, if I'd consider donating the deer for their banquet mm -hmm. at the church. And I did that last year too. And so of course I was honored to do that because, you know, as hunters, we are providers is how I look at it. And I love Mitch and everything he does. And so, um, um, yeah, I, I happily donated that, even though I love the deer meat and it goes to good use. Uh, so my elk is being processed right now from Colorado. And for people that, you know, I, I do get criticized for, uh, oh, you don't cut up your own meat, you know, blah, blah, whatever. It's like, fuck, I've cut up a lot of my kills. What I, my approach on that is I like to keep the money local because mm. these meat processors, they work hard. Uh, and if I can... If I can, you know, pay them and, and, uh, keep, you know, work local like that, then I'm, I'm happy to. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I got Gates processing here in Cottage Grove, Oregon that I always use. Um, I got then Colorado, I always use that. Uh, I got Frontens there in Wyoming. They sent me a really nice message about the post we did, uh, with Joe mm -hmm. there and what a difference it makes. They're in Evanston, Wyoming, and that's where I took my Utah kill. So it's like, this makes a big impact for a small business like that. So yeah, I could get the, you know, freezer paper and get the whatever, wrap it up, cut it up, did that every year. Cause that's just what people did, did. But now, um, I just have a different approach and I like to, you know, share the wealth essentially as far as uh, supporting these businesses. And yeah. so that's what I do. And that's, that's what I did there. Yeah. One, one comment I always see too, is people are like, Oh, you know, you don't need to kill, you know, four bulls a year. That's, that's excess. You're not eating all that meat, but you're donating, you know, you're, you're giving a lot of that meat to the guides or to Truid or to, you know, you know, so my family. Exactly. And, yeah. or, or you're giving it to the guys you used to work with or whatever it is. And, you know, from my perspective, it's like, you know, I, I think like after this year, I was like, I don't know if he'll have enough meat this year. It yeah. seems like he gave a lot of it away, you know? Yeah. And, and it's not just donating because there are people who, there are these, some big money hunters that go, they don't care about the meat. Yeah. And it's just like, they're like, I don't care what you do with the meat. 
that's a hundred percent different than what I do. Yeah. And I'm not, people can do whatever they want. I'm not, I don't, that's not how I look at it. That's not how I, if I kill it, I take great pride in taking care of the meat and I want it for my family right. or, or who I want to give it to. So it's not like I'm donating, not I, my attitude isn't like, yeah, do whatever you want with it. I don't want it, which I've heard before. Um, so I'm very intentional about where I, I, you know, I gave like the Utah bull, Truett and Alicia, my son and his wife, I gave them half the bull last year in Utah because he's been with me for five hunts and they, he eats a lot of meat. Yeah. He's, he's a, you know, strapping young man, <laughs> training pretty damn hard, eats meat all day, every day. And they're about out of that. So now that Utah bull just got done and he went and picked it up, I think yesterday. And then Ed, who's guided me there for seven years, great guy, love, love that his, his prayers after the kill are some of the most emotional and um, well-intentioned prayers I've ever heard. And we have a connection. We have a bond. I love him like a brother. I give him half that kill. So um, you can judge that if you want. And if you, you do want to negatively judge me for that, I'll just say, fuck off. I don't know how someone could negatively judge they you will. that, but they will find a they way. They will. They're they dipshits. Will. Yeah. But, uh, or some are dipshits, not everybody. Some people <laughs> will get it. Um, you know, my Oregon bull here, uh, half will go to Kevin, who's my buddy. He didn't even get a chance to hunt with me. He was yeah. in camp. He was helping another hunter there. This is last last night here in Oregon for those guys. And I hope uh, Ed uh, Macarelli, I hope he gets a bull, but Kevin helped him. So we didn't even hunt together, but because Kevin's a, a bow hunting brother of mine, I'm giving, giving him half that bull and yeah. I'm taking half of that one. Um, yeah, so uh, in Arizona, that's the best eating bull that I get. So I'm gonna keep all that one. Other than sharing, um, I just gave, I get massages twice a week from, uh, from Jason gave me a massage. Uh, when was it Friday or yesterday maybe? And I gave him a cooler full yeah. of meat. So it's just like, to me, hunters provide, we've always been providers in the community. Um, this meat isn't going to waste. I'm not saying I don't care what you do with it. Get rid of it. I, I, I'm bent over that bull, every bull I kill. And my goal on every kill is to get the most meat, more meat than anybody off that animal. Hey. And I don't know if I do, but that's my goal. So, I mean, they said you, you in Utah, right? That it was the most meat they had gotten off of a quartered elk. Yeah, it was 386 pounds. That's so, crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> Judge all you want. I mean, yeah, the, the, the facts are there. If you want to look, they're there. Mm -hmm. So... Black Rifle Coffee is celebrating a decade of coffee in 2024. They're the only coffee I drink, and supporting them is supporting veterans and the outdoor community. One of my favorite packages that I get on a monthly basis is a Black Rifle Coffee Club exclusive coffee roast. The exclusive coffee club subscription gives you nothing but the best. It's a coffee of the month club where you get premium roasts from the best farms worldwide. Black Rifle Coffee is America's coffee. It's veteran owned and operated. They support hunting and conservation and give back immensely to the veteran community. They're offering followers of the podcast 20% off on your first purchase to the coffee club or order on their site using code keep hammering to get America's coffee today. One of the most common questions I get is how do I start hunting? My answer, gohunt.com. I actually really wish there was something like gohunt available to me when I was younger. It would have saved me a lot of time hunting areas that game was scarce. Go Hunt is just like Zillow, but for hunting. You can see every hunting opportunity in the West and easily sort by game you're looking to chase, along with draw odds, over-the-counter opportunities, harvest stats, and even trophy size you can expect. Even if you've been hunting your whole life, the information you can get from Go Hunt is way beyond what you'll find anywhere else. It's the best way to go on more hunts every season. They've also got public and private land maps and an online gear shop filled with field tested hunting gear, not just the basic stuff you can buy at a big box store. If you find it in their shop, that means they've tested it on hunts and can guarantee it's good. If you haven't checked out Go Hunt, see for yourself how easy they make it to plan a hunt. You can use code CAM, that's C-A-M, when you sign up and you'll get $50 to spend in their gear shop plus 10% off most items in their store. So, Colorado, finish that up. I think we took a day to rest because you were had no sleep and no, I hadn't slept in a couple of days. Yeah, a couple of days. So yeah, I think I, I think I said, 
what we're going to get some sleep and leave like what 10 or something yeah, did, i mean not the next not morning late. yeah or not early yeah just take the day to drive yeah get get so burnt a day driving instead of driving all through the night and we got back to arizona at, i think enough time did i shoot my i think i shot my bow right before dark yep yeah so or in the headlights or something but yeah yeah, yeah just to make sure yeah i gotta shoot every day when i'm hunting and uh yeah so then got so got to Arizona, shot your bow, went to bed and woke up. Uh, and then that morning, um, yeah, we got into a little action. That was the morning that we were uh, sprinting, trying to catch up. Which one? The first morning back in San Carlos, that bull was kind of going away from us. And, you know, it sounded like it must, he must have turned oh, every oh, now and then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, trying to close distance on a bull that's moving up to from the, from where they were at at night up to where they're going to bed, that's yeah. rough. It was, <laughs> that, that's rough. That's tough to do. And we did, you know, got to, got to the herd, got to the cows, could see the bulls, black legs scissoring through the brush up there, but never could really get an opportunity to, to do, do anything with him. No. Yeah. Um, but Big I think Joe is bugling back yeah. there. It's uh, we just couldn't make it happen. Yeah. Um, so finished up that morning hunt. And then, you know, went back to camp and got an idea for the evening, mm -hmm. which was. Yeah. So when we were in Colorado, they got a picture of a bull hitting water. And like I said, there's no guarantee just because they hit water a couple of times that, you know, you're going to see them. But there was like this, a big, like split fifths, giant frame bull. Um, if you want to be critical of them, people would like to identify him. They say, oh, he's got kind of short thirds but his frame was giant. And uh, so they said this bull would be coming in water. So I'm like, okay. Uh, but any, you know, when that water, I, I, mean, I mean, in the evening, when the sun goes down, the wind switches. I mean, mm -hmm. the sun's up high, wind's doing one thing, it drops below the ridge. Like when those bulls usually come in after the sun gets gets off uh being so intense and kind of gets behind the trees that kind of cools the area that's going to change the wind pattern right? right so i was a little nervous about sitting on the water hole i hadn't have you know it's not i haven't done that hardly ever right and uh so i'm like god i wonder is there trees around this water i wonder if i could get up in a tree to kind of help play the wind or like not have to deal with the switching wind once the sun kind of started to go down and it started to cool for the evening. So I said, let's go. Big Joe took us uh, there early. And uh, so I could check out the water hole and did a little scanning around. I'm like, well, God, I think I could get up that tree right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the bulls were coming off the hill to the west and uh, coming down. And so they're coming from higher. So normally if the wind's bad and they're coming from higher, the wind's going to go right to them, right. you know, if it's wrong. So I'm like, I got to get way the fuck up this tree, <laughs> right? So just to kind of alleviate that being busted, if the bulls are coming off that hill like that. Um, so that was quite the endeavor to try to get. <laughs> I got way up there. Uh, I was like, my bow is on the ground. You had the rope yeah, from the go hunt uh, kill kit. Yeah, from the go hunt kill kit, we had a little nylon no, rope. That came in handy a couple times. It did. Yeah, those yeah. kill kits are sick. Yeah, I, I don't know what else. What else did we pull out of that? Uh, we pulled out. So we pulled out the rope. We had the pen in there. Yeah, obviously the game bags. Yeah. Um, I think that's. Oh, there was flagging in there, but we didn't use it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that rope, you tied a rock on the rope, threw it up to me somehow. I think the first time, was it? Yeah. Was it first the first time. throw? Pull my, pull my bow up. I told you, I said, all right, go get set up. I said, you know, way, I, I didn't want you screwing this up. Right. So I'm like, find a place up there on the hill. I figured you'd go up high and then you could see, and you could see me in the bowl of the water. It wasn't ideal because once you went over there, we couldn't communicate. And so I'm, I didn't know what you could see. I'm yeah. like, well, I can see you. I'm hoping you can see everything good. But what, it wasn't a perfect, <laughs> perfect. I mean, we didn't, you know, this is a on the fly game plan. Um, That's being nice. <laughs> yeah. It's i uh, I'm glad you had the lens you had on. Let's just say that for that one. Yeah. 
a 200 millimeter lens because yeah. you were like a hundred and some yards away. Um, but yeah, so we were up there at about, man, three, probably all set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think right. we, we got there at two. two. Yeah. yeah. So I felt pretty good. Had an arrow knocked. I'm just standing on branches. This wasn't ideal, but I'm standing on two branches. So it's not like I had a tree stand or a no. platform. I'm just kind of balancing on these two branches up here, but I had my bow hanging on like a broken limb and my pack hanging right here. So I'm like, I've had to make tougher shots. This isn't <laughs> ideal, but you know, and then I, I like range the, the water there, like to the far other side. I'm like, I hope that bull doesn't go over there. Cause that's a poke. <laughs> but right here is like, I'm close to me with like 20 yards. So I'm like, well, I took that one practice shot and the arrow disappeared yeah. into the mud. So, but it hit, I took it at 46 yards. So I'm like, okay, I got, I can make the shot from here. I always take a practice shot. I'm like 46 yards. It was pretty close to right on. Yep. Hopefully that bull will come about that, that distance. But yeah. So what'd you see that night? Uh, I mean, we had that bull come in that first bull, that eight by seven, mm -hmm. which when he, so, I mean, I guess what, what first happened was, uh, you know, they were, bu they started bugling mm -hmm. up on that hill. Uh, and then that eight by seven came down and, from my perspective, I was like, as a big bull. Giant. <laughs> yeah. Giant. But again, I wasn't, it was, there was still a little question like, oh, is that, is that him? Is that 400 or, and so he came down and uh, you got a really cool clip of him kind of wallowing and down in the, down in the water. And I, di I didn't know what you could film. So I came to full draw on him. Just got, thought that'd yeah. be, you know, if you could see me, that'd be kind of sick. And then I just kind of let up, which there's something about putting a pin on a bull like that and not shooting, but you're still going through the process of aiming and just seeing that size of bull in your sight housing. It's, you know, that doesn't happen every day. Yeah. So you have to go th to, to get in this big bull mindset. I think you need those reps like that. So I'm like, God, I could, I mean, at that time is 39 yards <sighs> drinking leg forward. I'm just like, Oh my God, am I really going to pass up this freaking giant? And I'm like, what if I get back and we show this footage and they'll be like, what you, that's a 420 bull. <laughs> what are you thinking? And I'm like, I fucking don't know. I don't know how I can't, I can judge like up to maybe 370. Yeah. Right. Past that. I'm like, I have no idea. Really. I mean, I sort of do, but I haven't seen a ton of those. Right. So I'm like, I don't know. Should I shoot them? And then I'm like, God, I don't, I mean, main beams were, I don't think they're like the, you know, you want a 60 inch. I don't, it doesn't look like that. So I'm like, I guess I can't shoot it. Cause I'm not, cause they say like for there, if, when you see a bull, a shooter bull, it'll be like, no doubt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I was questioning it. So I'm like, it's not a no doubter. Right. It's freaking giant. Yeah. But you know, I mean, was it, was it similar to that one right there? And that's 398. It was not quite that. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, okay, I guess I just won't shoot him. <laughs> and so he left and I'm just like, or he kind of lo laid over there in the mud. Then he kind of walked, he, he, oh, he went back up on the hill. Yeah. Then we heard another bu uh, bull bugling coming. And I saw him back in the trees and I was just like, holy shit. Okay. Yeah. That is a, that's a different caliber bull. Yeah. And that was a split fifth bull. And he kind of went over and kind of pushed that bull up the hill. And then he came down to the water. And then what, what'd you see? Yeah. So he came over, there was like a little cattle fence there or something. I hopped over it. And, and that's when I got really good eyes on him. And I was thinking the same thing. I was like, okay, this is the bull. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he came, he came down into the water, but unfortunately, uh, from my sitting area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I didn't know you couldn't see the water. Couldn't see the water from, from what I was filming. And, you know, thinking about this, when I first walked over there, remember there was like a little spot. I, I first looked back at you mm -hmm. and I can't remember if I could perfectly see the water from there either. But then I came further back. And, um, and when that first bull came in, actually there was, there was cows that, that came down first, uh, 
cattle cows. And I, and I was like, okay, it's not, it's not great viewing from, from where I'm at. And I thought about moving, um, two, two thoughts crossed my mind though. One, I didn't want to move and fuck something up. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then two, there were, the cattle were pretty skittish. They were very skittish. Yeah. And there were a couple, maybe 45, 50 yards from me. And I kept poking my head around and they were just staring me down. So (laughs) I'm like, fuck. Um, Yeah. So I didn't end up moving. And, uh, obviously that was a mistake. (laughs) Well, I mean, if you would have pushed the cows off and they would go thundering off hooves and that would cause the elk to come in late, that wouldn't be great either. Cause the elk hear that. Yeah. But so long story short, the bull comes down. You can't, while you can't see the water, you can see the bull. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So So, it's, it, it could, could be better. It could be worse. It could be worse for sure, and it definitely could be better. <laughs> yeah. But we don't strive for mediocre here, so that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's that's one thing. In one of our uh, uh, debriefs, I said the goal is the best ever. Yeah. The best we've ever done. And once we do the best we've ever done, the next goal is to beat that. Yeah. We're not trying to, you know, so it's not the best ever. <laughs> definitely not the best ever. Um, so this bull came, came and I was like, okay, this is him. This is a 400 inch bull. I got to make this happen. Right. And, uh, he gets out there 51 yards feeling pretty calm. I mean, yeah, I actually like intentionally like took some deep breaths to relax. 51 down my sight. Sun was kind of down on his backside. So for me, looking it's a little bit kind of silhouetted a little looking through my sight and i'm like picking a spot but i couldn't really see my arrow because he's kind of backlit so i shoot and he doesn't do anything and i'm like did i miss yeah and i didn't know because i it it's hard to tell did it hit water did it hit him um it didn't sound like water but I don't, I've never shot into the water, so I don't know. Uh, and then I'm like, I don't think I missed. It felt like I did. I, I did, you know, held the pin there. And then he starts to kind of like waver a little back and forth. I'm like, oh my God, he's going to go down right there. So I started, I got my camera and I filmed him. Then I'm like, oh, he's not going down. I need to get another arrow in him. So I put my camera, my phone away real quick quartering away pretty steep and i got that footage not me shooting obviously but him pretty steep so i tried to sneak an arrow off his hip and i hit him again right there um and then he turned and went a little more to the left kind of broadside on this other side and i shot him there again a little high but he had three arrows into his cavity there and then he he ran out and i watched him bed about 100 yards and i didn't you know i didn't like seeing I don't like when an animal suffers. And so I tried to get down on that tree as fast as I could and, and run over there and get an air. I had one more arrow. I take four arrows and I had three in them. And uh, by the time I got there, he was dead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, from my point of view, I could see both of you once he had bedded down and, you know, it went, it went by pretty quick. Um, I think all three of those shots were pretty good. So, yeah. So they're just tough. Yeah, they're big, big, big tough yeah, animals. Yeah. It was, that was one of the more emotional kills I've had. Yeah. Because I felt a lot of pressure to not let the tribe down, not let Homer and, and Tim and Mark down and everything they've built and, you know, not wound a bull, not, not shoot too small of a bull just to do something that the Apache tribe of San Carlos could be proud of. Yeah. And, uh, so when that happened, um, you know, that was a lot. Yeah. That was a lot to deal with. Yeah. I mean, and it's heavy anyways, you know, it's, it's taking a life. I mean, uh, for uh, one reason or another, I cried three times this season. So, <laughs> so it's, you know, maybe, the, maybe the haters will have at, have it that this time around, you know, <laughs> these guys, I don't even know what to say, but it's, uh, it's, it's emotional. It's like, it's not only, as you said, killing an animal, that, which yeah. has a heavy burden, you know, and, and I've said this before, but when I was a kid, I never even thought about it. I, I could kill an animal and I'd just be like, you know, whatever. It's what we do now. Just is it, it's 
there's more weight to it. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I don't know why. Um, it's just different for me. So th just the, that, the gravity of that situation, and then just like this, this pressure from these things, it's, yeah. uh, it's freaking, it's, I don't know. There was, <laughs> I don't know. Pe people can, yeah, people I will have co comments. I'm I sure, was talking but. to Connor on the phone last night and, you know, just saying how it's like, you know, you have that huge release, but it doesn't last that long. You know, you, you turn around and then, okay, you know, now we have to do that all over again. You do that again and then again. And it's, you know, it's my dream to hunt all month and to hunt four states for bulls. It's, I've always dreamed it, but to get one bow kill is hard, really hard. Yeah. And as you said, to do it four consecutive times, <laughs> I mean, it sounds great. It sounds great from the outside, but oh, so much can go wrong. So, so many challenges with bow hunting. It's, uh, you know, and on these hunts, it's, uh, people need to realize these are, cause these are landowner tags or like, uh, you know, San Carlos is it's a rifle is legal. Yeah. And a lot of people that the majority of people take that. Choice. Yeah. And so, but I'm a bow hunter yeah. and if it's not going to die by a bow, I, I'm, I'm not killing it. And, um, bow hunting is, I don't care where you're hunting or what you're, it's just, especially if you're hunting big bulls, it is very, very hard. And just trying to capture that lightning in a bottle four times in one month. Yeah. yeah. And we threw in the grizzly and the mule deer in there too. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's freaking taxing. <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> For sure it is. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I do have a little quiz for you, mm. San Carlos. I, I want to know if you remember your words. For what? For good morning, oh, San Carlos. Oh, shit, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Do you have them? I have them. What is it? Jospe. Jospe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's well, good morning? That's good morning. Yeah. So you could say Jospe San Ka, which is good morning, San Carlos. Right. And then brother, yeah. which is Shukasin. Shukasin. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I know. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, man, I love the people of San Carlos. And when I killed that bull, how wow. many people showed up? That was so cool. It was, yeah. I mean, we, we had, you know, women and kids mm. and guys helping and guys just hanging out, talking. Um, we did an offering. Yeah. Um, I left, uh, you know, a piece of the hide there and a piece of meat and left an offering with a deer antler and, uh, you know, said some words there. So just the, I don't know that those people mean so much to me and that country means so much yeah. to me. It's, uh, I can't put it into words, but that was a very special evening, um, or night, you know, that happened right at kind of getting towards last light. And then by the time everybody showed up, it was well after dark and broke that bull down and, uh, took it all, you know, clean that bowl up and everybody's there for the whole time and just loved it. Yeah. That was one of my, I think one of my favorite moments of the whole month was breaking that bowl down with everyone there. It was just yeah. pretty special. Yeah. Uh, the energy was, was great. Yeah. It was incredible. And, uh, yeah, I, I you know, like, like I said, I just, I never want to let, um, the tribe down for sure. So yeah. that felt really good and, you know, just a great bull, you know, to honor him and, and to have him here in my home is going to be very, very special to me. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, we finished up there. I, I think, did we take an extra day there too? Where did we head to after that? Utah? Utah was after that. But uh, you came. You drove to Utah, Yeah, right? I drove to Denver, stayed there for two days, and yeah, drove to Utah. Yeah, with your buddy. Then yeah. I flew home. What did I do? I flew home. Oh, <laughs> retuned my bow. <laughs> For the fucking fourth time or not that, that by the time the season's over is the fourth so yeah i'm i'm i had a hard time with the stock strings this year so i'm gonna i'm gonna use gas bow strings that's all there's to it um my, my bow for whatever reason and it's not probably not the bow strings fault but 
you know, you're flying to all these haunts, it's different weather conditions. It's 36,000 feet in a plane yeah. down to a hundred degrees in the, in at San Carlos. So back up to the mountains of Utah and Colorado and, or, and over here on the coast in Oregon. So it, it'd take a pretty special string to not be influenced by all that, but I'm going to give gas both, both streams <laughs> a try because I just, you know, I got tired of like, seemed like my, I was getting these just different flight, you know, and with, and my groups were opening up a little bit. And I'm like, it's fucking bows. Something happened here. So I'd go and retune it. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be having that. Or if we can avoid it, that's, that's best. Yeah, it's all good. I mean, yeah. I, I've used stock bowstrings for years and had no issues. And that's why I used to shoot winner's choice back in the day because a bowstring was stretched. The stock strings were kind of garbage. You know, I think Matthews even had zebra strings. Those were pretty much garbage. And, um, then, uh, Hoyt started doing a great job and I had no issues until this year. So I don't know. I don't know if it was just kind of a crazy situation, but yeah, who knows? anyway, I, I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then we recouped, uh, went to Utah yep. and, uh, met, let's see, did you pick me up? I picked you up at yeah. the airport. Yeah. Yeah. How was that drive? It was good. It was actually pretty quick. Um, I think it was seven hours from Denver. Oh, so. that's not bad. Not, a, not bad at all. No. And we got through it, met up with, met Joe yep. at the Ogden airport, Colton. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Am, am I missing anything? I don't think so. I think that's it. Did we get in and out? No. I, did we not get in and out? I don't think that's we did. criminal. Yeah. Yeah. I got Joe and Adam and Colton and then. Oh yeah. Headed to camp. Yeah. Headed to camp and yeah, we talked about, yeah, we talked about Utah on the last podcast. Yeah, I think that's pretty covered. Yeah. Uh, I just want to add that in the first evening we hunted, I heard more bugles than I think <laughs> I've heard my entire life. That was, that place is insane. It's, yeah. uh, yeah. And you know, I did, we didn't talk about this in, in the recap with Joe and, and Adam, but there is a, uh, there is a balance too, because you can have, it's great habitat. They've managed it incredibly, but if there's too many elk, right. then maybe the, the size of the bulls will suffer. Right. And so it's like, there's like, yeah, you can have too many predators. You can have too many elk. You can have not enough elk. You can have bad habitat, but getting that all dialed in perfect. It's an, it's a science for sure. Yeah, they definitely. do. They do an incredible job, but, uh, it's never ending. You know, and then, oh, then you yeah. got to balance the, you know, hard winter, um, heavy rains, light, light rains in the spring. It's just like, there's a lot that goes into it for sure. They, they do it. Amazing. I, like I said, in that last podcast, I wish all fishing game could do as well as they do. Yeah. Um, but you know, fishing game has different goals oftentimes. And a lot of times it's a money-making goal. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so I think if, if, the viewer or the listener does want to listen to that. They should just go check out the podcast with Joe and Adam and yeah, um, get the recap, get the recap of all three of your guys' hunts. Cause mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. So we can, we can skip over that, um, and get into Oregon, which for me was my first, uh, time, you know, being around Roosevelt elk, which mm -hmm. is super cool. We heard less bugles than Utah. <laughs> <laughs> slightly yeah we heard like two yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah. roosevelt bulls aren't aren't act aren't like as vocal for sure but we did hit in and out on the way that we did we didn't miss in and out this you know time. What we did what we screwed up though we got two double doubles and then had a hamburger and we got to camp at ron's three burgers probably within what two hours yeah but it's three burgers five patties <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was, that was pretty rough. Uh, that's a lot of burger, but Ron and his wife, Kayleen Hofsis are in, I, I love those. I love them. They're like family. Um, and I've hunted that property now since 2010. It's, it's like, it's, you know, basically a private timber company. Um, so yeah, it's like warehouse release type thing. Um, you know, logging is going on there. We, you know, log trucks going up and down the main line there, uh, when we're hunting, but, uh, it, it's, 
I love the small logging community towns because that's like where I grew up mm. uh, here in Marcola. Powers reminds me of that small little high school there. Uh, they love their their small town high school football. And that's, you know, that was the name of the game back when I grew up. So I, there's like a lot of, a lot of, I just, I mean, I got a soft spot in my heart for towns like that and people who work in the woods and hard work and small town people. It's just amazing. But Ron and Kayleen, uh, their son, Ryan, their daughter wasn't there, but we got uh, Kevin Akers, my buddy. Um, he takes a whole month off and hangs out there. He just loves to elk hunt. Ed, uh, um, Macarelli was there hunting also and uh Bubba and Dave yeah. and the, the, that's the crew the dream team Bubba and Dave go out they just you know go out to glass and look at elk um Ron same thing kind of you know comes up with the game plan or like I'll throw something out to him and it'd be like sounds good just pretty much you know it's just whatever and uh yeah it was it was a kind of a tough year yeah, I mean, I obviously am not familiar with. Um, that was my first time down there. Yeah. Um, but it, for me, it was kind of a trip. You know, you'd be, you know, those ferns growing, and it's kind of temperate. And for me, I mean, that's just totally different than any kind of elk hunting I've ever done. Yeah. Um, but it was super cool. Um, yeah, and the country down there is just beautiful. Yeah, it's it's I love it. It's a coast range. Um, put in some miles down there. I yeah. Think. I can't remember. Did we get 10 miles? We had to average pretty pretty close to it. Yeah. So uh, getting some miles, I was I had first night, Tanner went with us too. He had, uh, we went on a Sunday, I think. Or no, Saturday. Saturday. So Saturday night, we got th down there in time to go out hunting. And we got out there and Tanner spotted this bull down this yep. unit. Did this perfect stock. I Tanner stayed up top, but... Got the wind in my face, had a good, you know, almost took off before I had a landmark. But then I was like, shit, hold on. Now, let's see, where's this bull? Because these big units, like you get down there, you don't know where the fuck you are. Yeah. And uh, it looks so much different from down there. This is a giant unit. But I had this this uh, red tree down there. Basically, I don't, I don't know if it was uh, something that killed it. I don't know if it was a bear tree or whatever. But anyway, you know, bear will go and they'll eat the bark off around a tree and it kills a tree. They'll just mm. peel the bark off to eat that pulp under there. So I'm not sure what happened, but anyway, the tree was red and, and dead. And I'm like, okay, get to that tree, that bull's to the right. So it's like, I don't know, 400 yards, probably 500 yards, maybe 600. I'm not sure how far it was down there, but w got wind good. Me, you, Kevin was behind you and got down in there. And I get to that red tree and I'm like, look, and I'm like, taking it pretty slow it is a quiet night and three people going yeah. through that fucking unit was, I thought loud as shit. It's blaming you again, but, <laughs> um, got down there and I'm just like looking, scanning one step, scanning, scanning. I, we're kind of in the sun, which I hate being in the sun. And I, I get up there. Then I'm like looking and I'm like, is that, that looks like, is that an elk? Right. You know, like 25 yards. It was the bull's butt. And then I look, I could see his antlers mm. And I'm like, holy shit, he's right there. So he kind of, he didn't, he barked, but bark bugled. Like he yeah. didn't really know what happened, but he did a bark and then turned it into a bugle. Yeah. So then Kevin called and he comes right up. So I come to full draw. He steps out perfectly broadside. He's a nice five point. He had a herd of about four or five with him, but a nice five point herd bull, which, you know, people who haven't hunted Roosevelt would be like, is, is that a good bull? It's like, yeah, that's, that's a good Roosevelt. It's just different. Um, for Rocky. Yeah. He'd be yeah. like a satellite bull. Yeah. And, uh, but for Roosevelt, he was a herd bull and he stood there at about 25 yards, a little under 30 yards. He came to full draw and we got killer footage of him. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, someone, someone's probably got, killer killer footage of him somewhere <laughs> i did with my phone yeah. afterwards so yeah but anyway pass this bull up because i'm like i don't want to that was basically the first stock of the hunt mm. and i'm like this is my last outcome of the year i love this shit yeah i don't want this to end right now and uh so i didn't shoot him and then kevin was like kevin had been down there all month <laughs> and he goes i would have shot that bull <laughs> he goes it's been really hard this year and uh and he goes, 
you should have shot that bull. And I'm like, ah, nah, not on the first night. And he's like, I'm just telling you, that's, he goes, that was a heavy five point. And uh, so anyway, didn't shoot him, uh, kept grinding it out. And I think, I don't really know, there was a limping six point. I don't know what happened to his leg that, uh, you know, I, he, he was a little bit bigger than that bull, but we could never make it happen on him. Yeah. I got within, I think 55 or 50 some yards of him one morning and just, you know, wasn't meant to be. Um, and then let me think, was that the best opportunity? Yeah. I mean, old Gimpy was at 52. Um, you know, we had the, uh, the next night after, uh, or no, it was that night after that morning. Uh, we went to the back to that same spot and had those, I think it was three cows and like a, you know, kind of a four corn or, uh, you know, rag horn. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, it wasn't really what you were looking for, um, uh, or, you know, age wise. And, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, we had those three cows pin us down at like 15 yards or, or might've been even been closer. That one that popped up was pretty close. Um, and that was, that was kind of, yeah, a major, yeah a majority of the interactions we had. Yeah. Um, you know, that we weren't seeing a ton. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that evening we went for that hike. Yeah. In a little bit different area. Yeah. We, uh, tried to do a big loop, ended up going, you know, kind of butt brush busting for a while, <laughs> yeah. sweating our asses oh, off. Oh my sauna. God. Yeah. It was sweating to beat hell. And then I start, so I did this walk where I've killed a bull down there before, and so we were miles into this thing, but, uh, now it was like, because it took so long to get around these, there's cows in there and, uh, trying to go down, kind of get the wind right. And the cows were there and if the cows spook, you're not getting an elk. So I had to circle all the way back up and around, drop into this Creek. And by this time now it's getting close. The sun is going yeah. down. I'm like, fuck where I wanted to get for the evening hunt. We're late now. So I'm bombing down this this on the other side of the ridge from where the cow, the cattle were and trying to get to the bottom where we still had light to, to hunt, get all the way down there, trying to be quiet, trying to hustle all this, all these things going on, pissed about how long it's been taken. And, uh, I get down there and we finally hit this old skid road at the very bottom and it heads into the meadow where I've, om I've almost shot a bear there before I killed this, this bull sitting right over there. It's like a it's a seven by six, like a 300 inch bull and, uh, killed him there before. And so it's, it's a good area. And, uh, I get down and we start going pretty slow and I'm working on the skid road. We've got about 15 minutes of shooting light left. I think, I think this is getting close to like 7:20, And I think shooting light was over like 7:40, something like that. And so kind of hustling, but trying to get into this meadow but before i get to the meadow i look and i'm just like oh, what the hell am i looking at there and i look up and i can just see the backs of two elk just in the grass because it the road kind of fell off and i'm like holy shit i just I told you i said there's elk right there and they were about at that time about 40 yards so i sneak up about 10 more yards and these elk are coming from the right to my left and those two were had already passed but there's more coming i'm like Oh my God, if this bull comes out right here, it's going to be 30 yards. I'm just going to smoke it. If, the, if there's, But there hadn't been one bugle. No. Not one bugle. We had no inkling that there was a bull there. <laughs> Nothing. Not a peep of anything. But there's these elk coming through. And uh, so I get up there and then I'm like, shit, what if he's already out here? And I'm losing light. So I try to sneak up and then a cow kind of busts me a little bit through the trees and I look back cause then I couldn't see where I thought the bull might come from. So I yeah. look back to you and I'm like, can you see a bull? And you're like, no. And I'm like, okay. So the bull's not, I thought I was snuck up there, fucked up my shot. And then you had a wide open shot of the bull is what I was afraid of. And, uh, so you said no. So I get up there in between these trees. I look up elk, then kind of spook. And there is a bull out there and I'm like, oh my God. Okay. So he's, the cows are kind of spooking. He's kind of walking from my right to left and I range him 67 yards, uh, and dial it up real quick. He keeps walking and I'm like, God, he's, he's staying at about the same distance. So I had to hustle, hustle, put my pin on him. Everything felt good. He stops 
And uh, he looks the other way, kind of quartering away perfect, looking the opposite way. I'm like, oh, this is a shot you dream of. But I wasn't 100% sure on the yardage, but I was pretty sure it was pretty close. So I put my pin on him, just shot, and I couldn't see that arrow hit. But then he went and he took off and he stopped again. And it's like, he's acting like he was hurt. So I shot him again yeah. and hit him with that second. And I'm like, I saw the first arrow, or I thought I hit him with the second arrow Yeah, is what happened. Cause I didn't see the first arrow in him, but then I saw it at the second shot. So I'm like, I told you, I said, oh, I was like so pissed. Cause I'm like, I think I might've screwed up. I said, I don't know if I missed him with the first shot and then just trying to get another arrow in him made a shitty shot on the second shot because right. the second shot was back. And I'm like, I thought it sounded like I hit him. So I was like, I just need to get, get another arrow in him. But what if I missed him? And then the only arrow I have in him is that bad shot. So I yeah. was like really, really upset. And uh, the last thing I want to do is make a bad shot on a bull. And heat of the moment, it was like, I was beside myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, when you had moved up ahead of me, I was pinned down by two cows just staring right at me. And so I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, fuck, here comes another classic. He, the bull's going to walk out. I can't see him from Walking mine. fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> That's my new name. I think that everyone. was a quote. That was one of the quote I said. I don't know what I said. I think anyway, you said never. somehow the walking fuck up pulled it off. <laughs> That was a compliment. Yeah. I mean. And I'll take it. Right. That was intended to be a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> so the, anyways, the, those two cows kind of eventually busted and I was just like, fuck it. So I just got up to you as fast as possible. At this point, like as I'm getting up to you, you come to full draw. So I zoom in and I just stick the camera up and I can just see the screen. I can see the bowl and I'm like, please, please. <laughs> and somehow... It was one of the best fucking kill shots I've seen. I mean, because it was high speed. Yeah. So the arrow comes arcing in and it hits that bull. And we didn't know we had that. So I'm like quiet going back, just like not even knowing how to internalize what just happened or where I hit this bull. Backed out of there. I marked where I was standing, uh, tied my sweatshirt there. And I'm just like, let's just you know, get out of here. I looked for that arrow. The first arrow I looked, cause I thought, did I miss him? Yeah. I needed to see if there's blood on it, but couldn't find the arrow over there. So then it was dark and we still had like, you know, a mile or more to walk out and, uh, get a ride back up to my truck. So we were down there, got down there late way after, or I mean, after dark. And, uh, we're like, you said, I don't know if I got it, but we'll get back and, you know, get it on the computer and look. So we go back and it takes a while to download that shit or upload or whatever the fuck load it is. But, uh, so I took a shower, I think, um, cause we were in poison Oak nonstop that all, all day. And, um, we got the, I remember we're sitting there and you know, you got the footage up, then you look up and I'm just like, I don't want to ask. Cause yeah. I'm like, I could, I could have asked a thousand times in the half hour it took to get that footage ready. But so I'm just like sitting there acting like I don't care, but I'm just like, all I care about is like this. I just want to look at this footage. So then you look up and you're like, dude, you smoked him. Yeah. And I was like, what? And I mean, I, I shouldn't have been surprised, but I, cause I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know if I were, if I even hit him on that first one. And then, so we look at the footage and you just, fucking killed that footage That's somehow so lucky. yeah and uh that arrow like so he's he's quartering away pretty good but then he turns and quarters away even more that arrow hits you know if it was broadside he'd be way back but with that angle you want to go for this offside leg and it was like a little bit on the back side of the offside leg but pretty much the offside leg so yeah. you're like that should be through everything and uh, that first one smoked him, and then I hit him a little bit lower on the second shot, but still got another arrow yeah. in him. So, and we could see that on film too. You got yeah. that shot too. Yeah. And so we're just like, okay, so a big part of this hunt or this moment for me, a decision was it was only going to get to like high 50s that night. Mm. And that's warm. Yeah. So if the bull died, if that bull, that arrow went quartering away and that bull died, um, you know, within pretty quick. And then 
if I waited till morning, the meat would be, I would lose all the meat. Yeah. So I, I knew the bull was going to die with that shot. Whether you're going to, you know, I, I figured he wouldn't go far because right. that looked like a good angle and the arrow looked like it went, you know, full penetration. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I think this bull's dead. Um, so I said, I think I hit it at seven 30, but just in case it was a little bit back, I'm like, um, let's go to 11 30, you know, and we'll get this meat. I don't, I don't want to lose some meat. So, I mean, now this is like, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know how I want to say this, but, um, yeah, here's what I'm going to say. I think the way the angle was and the way he turned, it got pretty much guts, right? And uh, it could, I, it had to have got his liver too, but they can live for a long time on the liver. Guts yeah. and liver, they can live for a long time. So moral to the story, we went back, 1130, jumped him, wasn't dead. And I'm like, I didn't sleep all that night. So I'm like, we're going to be back in there at first light. And I don't want him to suffer, but I don't want to lose this meat. So I'm just like, I don't even know what I'm hoping for right now. Right. Um, but I got back in there, first light, and uh, shot him again. Yep. And, and finished it. And uh, so he pretty much done was you know didn't move didn't head was up but point is it wasn't the kill that i work every day for it wasn't wasn't uh you know 50 yards and pile up which hunting it's the way it goes sometimes i mean yeah. as, as bad as it sounds as as tough as that is to deal with there's it's life and death and death isn't always pretty right i don't care what what animal was be human species animal species death is ugly sometimes yeah. this one um i this is not how i wanted it to go but the saving grace to it was the meat because i had i killed that animal the next morning um the meat was obviously yeah. he just just died so the meat was fine didn't yeah. lose any meat which when you're getting the high 50s if a bull lays all night you're pretty much losing all that meat yeah. and that would i would hate to kill an animal and also not get the meat yeah um that would be the worst case scenario um, an animal suffering longer than i wanted to is not ideal but me getting the meat so his that sacrifice and that kill is um there's there's purpose to it yeah. It's sustaining us. Um, so that was, yeah, that was a rough morning. I think, you know, one of the things that I, I learned a lot this season, but one of the things I really came away with is, you know, I spend a lot of time with you and I also know how hard you work. I know how much you care. Um, this is everything to you and you do more than anyone to prepare and, and, best offer that animal a, a, you know, a merciful death. And even then it's bow hunting and things can still go wrong. And so, you know, something I'm taking away from that is, um, you know, prepare as much as you possibly can because there are just certain things you can't control. And, and that's just the game. Um, you know, it, it, it is what it is, but there's always that silver lining too. That is, you know, we got, to, we got all the meat, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's hard. I don't think, I mean, obviously there's people out there that are just, they don't care. But, um, you know, everyone I know, everyone that's close to me, the killing is the our least favorite part. That sucks. It's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I cried three times this season and, and um, it's hard to take, take an animal's life. Um, you know, I think we all have a huge respect for elk and huge respect for animals and, and that's the least favorite part. But you know, it's the other things that, that make it so worth it. Um, and so to be able to get the meat from that elk was, was awesome, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I remember shooting that bull that morning and saying, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. 
it's uh yeah and then uh he passed and just sat there for you know i don't know 10 15 minutes yeah and just uh yeah and then broke him down yeah you know broke him down got that meat uh uh, Kevin and Ed showed up, you know, after their morning hunt, I was still working on that bull. Uh, Ron took, t he took 73 years old to pack two out quarters down. Yeah. I mean, and he loved it. Oh God. I, I tried. I was like, I'll take I it down. And he was like, no, <laughs> I, I was just working on that bull and, and he was just ready to take a load back down to the, um, Polaris there. And, uh, yeah, it's, I was a special morning. Yeah. So, and that's kind of like, you know, that's the book ends to mm -hmm. a hunt. There's the, the one end is the death and, um, the not ideal death of that situation. The other end is a camaraderie yeah. and sharing in those moments with Kevin, Ed, yeah. you, Ron, Dave showed up, you know, Bubba yeah. was down at the, at the buggy keeping flies off the meat. So it was that that those moments i'll never forget yeah. yes i'll never forget how i felt having to shoot that animal in the morning mm -hmm. i'll never forget the pain of that but also will never forget the just the positive experience and the emotion and the the fellowship and the brotherhood of packing that bowl out breaking them yeah. down getting that meat taken care of getting in into the you know Ron's got a walk-in cooler to shop, sitting there drinking coffee, looking at yeah. the kills from all the years previous in his shop. It's like Jake coming over from next door. I'll never forget that too. So it's like, do they off? Do they out? What was one outweigh the other? No. Yeah. You consider both of them individually, and you learn from both of them, and you yeah. appreciate both of them for different reasons. Right. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was the cap to a. Uh, you know, I don't want, you know, you said you cried three times. I don't want to make it seem like you're just, you know, cr this, this is like a stressful <laughs> and it wasn't, I don't give a fuck. You call me a <laughs> pussy. Go for it. <laughs> it was, I don't know if people, <sighs> I don't care it's what a people lot. say online. It's Whatever. a lot. It's a lot. You know? Uh, from grizzly to four elk hunts, um, yeah. driving back and forth, yeah. flying everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I will say. I don't cry about anything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's been some shit in my life that has happened that I didn't shed a tear for. So if that can shed any light on, on the, the mental, uh, status of where I was at. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I don't, I mean, people can think I'm a huge pussy. I don't really care. Yeah. I got, I got teared up on the San Carlos bull just because of how much pressure I felt, you know? Yeah. And that to me was, was a really special moment. Um, you know, I remember, you know, getting there and, um, you know, part of my job too is whether I am really bad at it sometimes or not, I just want to let moments breathe. Um, mm -hmm. and it's not all about, you know, <sighs> haters, <laughs> you know, I took a photo of you thanking that animal and someone had the, someone commented like, imagine posing for this photo. Yeah. That shit pisses me off. It's like... There is no posing. There is no posing. And I... Yeah. I mean, whatever. Maybe it's probably not even worth talking about, but it makes me mad. Yeah. Because to me, when I look at that photo, I see the raw emotion. You know? Well, you were there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you were there. So it's like, there are people in the industry who set up shots like yeah. that. So this wasn't that. No. And it's just like, I can't, you know... I, I, I see a lot of shit said about me. You know who, who doesn't talk shit about me? People who've hunted with me. Exactly. So if you hunt with me, you got shit to say, that means something. If you're just some dumb fuck out there who's got an opinion, but you've never hunted with me, what, what are you talking about? What, what would you know? So, um, yeah. So yeah. it's just, you know, I can't, I, I know there are people who, Maybe they look at hunting differently. Maybe hunting is more of a business to them. Maybe this and that, and that influences how people look at things. I don't know. I can't control that. All I can control is 
is me and how I conduct myself out there and, and how I carry myself on a hunt and, and what the standard I live up to. Right. If you want to criticize that, of course you can. Um, and it's, that's the way it goes. But I remember seeing that comment on that photo and that photo was, is, um, real and raw as it gets. Yeah. Um, I'm not staging shit like that. No. And I wouldn't either. Uh, you know, that's my work. I'm, 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 I think that photo depicts the emotion perfectly. So it's just shitty to watch someone come in who knows nothing and <laughs> yeah. fucking say something like that. That's, but, that's all good. That's why, you know, that's why we do this though, is yeah. we kind of give context to it. So it's, uh, I know we don't want to address the haters, but also I want to give context yeah. to, to moments and, and hopefully people can listen to this and, and you can judge, but hopefully this gives you a little more insight into kind of the complete journey of a month in the mountains. For sure. It was, um, uh, there's a lot, a lot to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's end. What, what was your, what's your number one highlight? If you had to choose one, maybe a couple. God. Um, you know, I'd, I'd be honest. It's, uh, when I kill, uh, that's just what I do. The highlights for me are when I see Joe succeed, mm. Adam succeed, uh, share those moments with Truett, my son, have Tanner there to spot a bull. Um, those, that's what stands out to me. I mean, I was wearing, Tanner made me necklace off of uh, my, the bull I killed in San Carlos last year. And I had that ivory around my neck um, when I killed, when I killed a couple of these bulls and, um, that's what stands out to me w when I kill it's pressure. I, I put a lot of pressure on myself. I work really hard to do this. This is my life, but this is just what I do. So it's like, it's the other, the other parts like seeing, uh, Joe succeed after starting him in bow hunting tw in 2014 and, and watching him have success and to see what that means to him. Yeah. And then, you know, I've, I've had some great hunts with Adam. I know how much, how good of a bow hunter he is. So having him just like on a high from this epic elk hunt that those are the moments that stand out to me. Yeah. Um, you know, seeing, seeing the tribe happy with what I did that, uh, the prayer with Ed Kinsey saying the prayer over my Utah bull that, um, yeah. Bubba, sure. Bubba, Ron, Kevin, being there with me in Oregon, mm. that's what stands out to me. It's, yeah. it's the people. Definitely. Yeah. That's awesome. How about you? I would say the same thing. I would say, uh, you know, a bunch of different people from all walks of life, uh, all connected through, you know, the mutual love and, and respect for bow hunting. And that's just really cool to see no matter, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be bow hunting. It's just cool to see people come together, no matter where they come from, what they believe, um, and all share a love and respect for something. Mm -hmm. And so deeply, um, you know, it felt like we were always surrounded by people that had that, you know, true authentic love, um, which, you know, doesn't get better than that. No. And I, I think in regular life, you, that's way more rare for sure in hunting. It's, you know, it's rare when that's not the case. Yeah. But so that, and that's what makes it so special. It's like the type of people that hunt and love the mountains. Those are like the, the, the type of people that this, the fabric of this country is yeah. built on just hard work. Um, just, you know, respectful, uh, just traditional Americans basically. Definitely. And so, yeah, it's like, uh, Yeah. It was, it was, you know, I got 11 months until yeah. another month in the mountains. Yeah. So I, I opened this with saying it was one of the hardest months of my life. So I'm going to close it by saying it was also one of the best. I mean, I had a blast out there. I learned a ton. Um, can't wait to do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. I mean, it's, uh, it's one of the hardest things to do to capture that on film and to, you know, it's such high stakes and you don't want to screw up. This is your first time filming yeah. me. Tanner had a little advantage because he's filmed me my whole life. Um, Tanner's a stud on the camera though. I, I told him, I said, I've only gotten more and more impressed with you this whole month. Yeah. Uh, he's a badass. 
Yeah, he was, I don't know if he's born to do it, but he's, you know, he's, he's, I told him, I said, you're better than you know. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I was glad you guys had that, that time in Oregon where he could, you know, share like his, how he approached for things. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, but I think, you know, for, for you, you're deaf, you, you care. That's the biggest yeah. thing. It's like, it's hard to make people good at something if they don't care about it. And so because you care and it means so much, you're going to, you, you got some great stuff. I mean, your photos, everybody comments on your photos. Your photos are world-class. Yeah. I don't know the about that, but the, yeah. they are. The filming is, uh, <laughs> it's a work in progress, but you got some incredible stuff. I mean, the grizzly, the yeah. last kill, we got some amazing footage. So yeah, it's just, you know, it's fucking tough. Yeah, it is tough, but that's no excuse. And uh, yeah, shout out to Tanner. That that conversation we had really helped. I texted him after that kill shot and just said, you know, a lot of his words helped me. Just just the confidence he had too. Um, so that was a big help. Yeah. Well, good work. Yeah. I know it was I know it was tough. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, you did a great job. We're better for it though. Yeah. All right. Time. Well, this is our month in the mountains update. Stay tuned for the films. Yeah. Are they done yet? Yeah, they're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Keep hammering. Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me, stop, I you. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. My fault. They want someone to blame. They sent their hate. It fuels my pace. I am Roy Tough. I am the change, the few endure. Feeling like Cam Haynes. Oh, give me the mods. Nobody wants. I'll give you my heart. I gave it to work.